Join Kids Hat Family. What's wrong, Tofu? I can't sleep. Would a bedtime story help? Yeah, I guess. The Ugly Duckling Once near a beautiful pond, there lived a handsome duck couple. They were very excited as the babies were about to get hatched from the eggs. The papa duck was so eager to see his babies that all he could do was roam here and there in anxiety. Suddenly, what they hear is sweet little quack quacks coming from the nest and the papa duck just rushes to the nest to catch the first glimpse of his babies. Oh my god! They are so lovely! Suddenly, a whole squack comes from below mama duck. You are so ugly and pale. You can't be our baby. The papa and mama duck along with their four babies sail away far away from the ugly duckling, leaving him behind in dismay and all alone. The poor duckling doesn't know what's wrong with him. He checks his wings, his beak, his feet, but all looks fine. Suddenly, he turns around and sees his reflection in the pond. And what he sees sends him complete disappointment. Nobody loves me. What would I do now? Where would I go? The ugly duckling starts walking in complete sadness. So many days, weeks and months pass by and the poor ugly duckling wanders all alone in the deep forest. Suddenly, he stops and feels extremely cold. Oh, it is so cold. I wish I had a warm house too. Suddenly, a huge ball of snow comes rolling from behind and the poor duckling gets caught in that and starts screaming for help. A woodcutter cutting the woods in a nearby place hears the scream of the duckling and runs for help. Oh poor thing! Come here! You need something warm to drink! The woodcutter picks up the ugly duckling and keeps him in the warmth of his overcoat. He takes him home and keeps him wrapped in a warm blanket right in front of the fireplace. Don't worry, poor little thing. I will take care of you. And like this, many years pass by and the ugly duckling grew under the care of the woodcutter. But one thing he made sure, never did he see his reflection again.
One day, on a sunny afternoon, he was wandering around the sides of a lake. Suddenly, he sees a wedge of swans swimming in the pond. Look at those swans! They are so beautiful! I wish I was a beautiful duck too. I have no friends because I am so ugly. I feel oh so lonely. To his amazement, he sees the wedge of swans coming towards him. What he sees is the most beautiful swan ever. Hey, we have never seen you around. Are you new here? No, I live nearby with the woodcutter. It's just that I don't come out often. Why is that so? Because I am an ugly duck. Nobody loves me. Nobody wants me. <laughs> <laughs> Not to his surprise, he sees them laughing at him. He decides to turn back when suddenly he hears the voice of the beautiful swan. Wait, where are you going? See, even you guys make fun of me. That's the reason I never come out. We laughed because you call yourself a duck. What do you mean? Yes, you are not a duck. You are a swan. And I haven't seen such a handsome swan ever in my life. He couldn't believe of what he just heard and stood there in a state of shock. And after a few seconds, managed to say, What? The beautiful swan held the hand of the duck and took him near the pond. See yourself. You are a swan. The ugly duckling very reluctantly bends over the water because he doesn't want to see the ugly him. But what he sees leaves him in total disbelief. He is not a duck. He is a swan. A handsome young swan. I am a swan! He jumps and flies and swims in sheer happiness and then suddenly stops to thank the beautiful swan. Thank you so much for making me know who I am. <laughs> so now that you know you are a swan, would you join our wedge? We would live together as a happy family. Yes, I would love to do that. And then the ugly duckling, oops, the handsome swan jumps into the water with the rest of the swans and swims proudly with them. So the poor duck was never a duck? A swan all throughout? <laughs> yeah, and that's what the moral of the story is. A diamond doesn't know its worth till it's polished. Aha! Uh -huh. Good night, Tofu. It's time to sleep now. later tonight. Later tonight? It's not safe to go alone, Tofu. And I won't be going because I have an exam tomorrow. So you won't be able to go either. But Jack said it's safe. And Joe and Jim, everyone is going. Who told him? Some older boys. We don't know them. They were visiting from another city. That's not the correct way to do things, Tofu. You have to double check some things for yourself at times. And be careful with whom you trust.
Do you know what happened to Chicken Little and his friends? What happened to them? Chicken Little Chicken Little liked to walk in the woods. One day, as she was walking in the forest and looking at the flowers and the trees, an acorn fell from a tree on the top of her head. Oh no! The sky is falling! I must run and tell the lion about it immediately. And so Chicken Little began running. On the way, she met the Henny Penny, the hen. Where are you running to? Is everything okay? Oh no, Henny Penny! The sky is falling and I am going to the lion to tell him about it. How do you know that? It fell on my head and hit me. That's terrible. Come, I'll go with you too. We must hurry and tell the lion about this. Chicken Little and Henny Penny started running. As they were heading to the lions, they met Ducky Lucky. Wait guys, wait! Where are you going in such a hurry? The sky is falling. It fell on Chicken Little's head. We are going to the lion to tell him about it. Let me also come with you. Come, come! As the three of them were running, they met Foxy Loxy. Where are you guys going? The sky is falling. It fell on Chicken Little's head. And we've decided to go to tell the lion about it. Yes, yes. The lion must be told about this. But do you know where he lives? The fox had pointed out this problem correctly. None of them knew where the lion lived. I know where he lives. Come with me and I will show you the way. Happy to have found help, the three of them agreed. The fox took them to his own den and told them to wait at its entrance as he went inside. Wait here. Let me go talk to the lion first. When he is ready to meet you, he will call you all inside. After a while, Foxy Loxy called from inside. Come in, friends. Chicken Little, Henny Penny, Ducky Lucky went inside but never came out again. So you see, Tofu, you should always exercise caution before you go following things blindly. Yes, Tia. Now I have understood the importance of trusting the right people and not believing things blindly. Tonight, I am going to stay home and will tell my friends to do the same too. What's for lunch? Come Tofu, Mum has made your favourite meal today. My favourite? Yum! <coughs> oh Tia, something got stuck in my throat. How many times have I told you not to eat in such a hurry? But I was hungry, dear. <laughs> you need to listen to this story. The Goose That Laid Golden Eggs Once upon a time, in a village, 
There lived a poor farmer with his wife. They had nothing but a little farm where they grew vegetables that they could eat. However, he managed to save a little money each time he sold vegetables from his farm. Eventually, he saved up enough money to buy a goose. He took it home and made a nest for it to lay eggs. The goose will produce eggs which he could use for selling, eating and making bread, thought the farmer. The next morning, when he went to gather some eggs for his breakfast, he lifted the goose and to his surprise, the goose had laid a golden egg. The next morning, he found another egg and the next and the next. Slowly and steadily, the farmer and his wife were becoming richer and richer. Just think, if we could have all the golden eggs that are inside the goose, we could be richer much faster. You're right, we wouldn't have to wait for the goose to lay her egg every day. So the couple killed the goose and cut her open. <laughs> Only to find that she was just like every other goose. She had no golden eggs inside of her at all. And they had no more golden eggs. Alas, now the farmer and his wife had lost the goose and they would never get any golden eggs again. So Tofu, just like the couple suffered because they were greedy, you should be careful too because too much greed always leads to great loss. Oh, got it Tia. I'll be careful next time. young man helping that man to cross the road? That's because he is blind and needs help to cross the road. Oh, how nice of that man to help him. Yes, it's always good to help others. Why, Tia? Come, Tofu, and I'll tell you a story. The Dove and the Ant. One hot day, an ant was walking near a river bank. The poor ant lost its balance and fell inside the water. Oh! Oh! Help me! Please help me! Help me! She screamed for help. As the flow of the river was too strong, she was carried away. A dove was watching all this from a nearby tree. The ant was struggling for life in the water. The dove felt very sad for the little ant. Help me! Please help me! Oh no! The little ant is in trouble! And he decided to help her. Help me! Please help me! He said to the ant, Don't worry my friend, I will save you. The dove quickly plucked off a leaf And 
and dropped it into the water near the struggling ant. The ant moved towards the leaf and climbed up there and the ant reached to the shore safely. The thankful ant said, I will always be grateful to you for saving my life. Few weeks later, the ant saw a bad hunter with a gun. The hunter was targeting at the dove sitting on the tree. Guessing what he was about to do, the ant quickly bit him on the heel. Ouch! You pathetic ant! What have you done? The ant walked away happily as she was able to help the dove in return. So Tofu, just the way Dove's good deed helped him to get out of danger by the ant. Similarly, every good deed we do for others will surely come back to us. Hmm, I will always help the needy. That's like a good boy, Tofu. For your favorite rhymes, stories and more, join Kids Heart family. Subscribe here!